Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to be with all of you. But before I say anything, I wanted to express my appreciation for President Anwar Yushel, for President uh, Sirin, and all you wonderful professors and deans and students who are present here at this wonderful event that's been organized. You know what struck me listening to all of you is the basic thing that your education in this wonderful system of education offered by Bakashair University is that it's helping you become global citizens. Sometimes education doesn't take you out of your community, of your city, of your country, of your continent. But I think the education you're getting here is pulling your mind away from local issues into global issues. And getting into global issues is the start of becoming a global citizen. So I'm so happy that you're getting this kind of education to become true global citizens. Of course, I don't like to stand on a podium and talk as if I'm giving all of you a lecture. I enjoy an interaction with you much more. I'd love to hear from you what's on your mind. What would you like to ask a person who's been in the UN for over three decades, who was part of the first ever meeting on climate change in 1991, and who's also been in the driver's seat when it came to developing the SDGs. So I'd rather respond to your questions. But in order to help you think through your questions, let me build on what I've heard today from Sirin and from the others as to what is the emergency that we all face and what is it that we must do to save our world for present and future generations. And I'll divide this into what I've been thinking for the last 30 years is a major interconnected problem which sometimes has been followed on different tracks. The first is the more easy to understand human problems which are captured in the SDGs. The problem of poverty, the problem of hunger, the problem of disease, the problem of gender inequality, the problem of social exclusion, where everyone doesn't feel a part of society, the problem of not getting decent employment, not getting decent work, the problem of no access to water, no access to energy, no access to protecting our terrestrial, that means our earth, no, no access to being uh, able to contribute to protecting our marine systems, our climate systems. And all these human problems are captured in what we call the SDGs. There are 17 goals and 169 targets. On the other hand is the twin brother or sister of the SDGs, which we call climate change. They are twins joined at the hip, but they're both saying the same thing. But on the climate change, we focus on carbon emissions. We focus on greenhouse gases. We, we see how the excessive emission, anthropogenic, which means man-made emissions of greenhouse gases, is causing this climate emergency. And we say the solution is really by curbing greenhouse gases, by mitigating the impacts, by adapting to the impacts. So the focus is very much in the climate change discourse on greenhouse gases, carbon emissions, methane gas, and many of the impacts of climate change work through water. Too much water, too little water, very strong hurricanes, uh, acidification of the oceans, melting, sea level, uh, melting glaciers, and so on. So a lot of the climate change, but somehow it doesn't resonate with the problems of the ordinary people. I'm from India, a poor country. If I go to my city and talk about climate change, they'll say, hey, our problems are problems of sanitation, of unemployment, of no jobs, of low income, of bad agricultural harvests. Solve those problems first. So we have to learn to speak a different language to bring these two issues 
much closer together. So that's my first thought I want to share with you, that treat the SDGs and climate change as part of the same thing. And uh, I see these lovely posters there, save our future. There is no planet B, yes. But to do that, all of us need to do two things. One, don't think change belongs to someone else, that it's some president or prime minister or the president of the university or onware or somebody else who has to do action on climate change. Each one of us has to have a personal agenda to contribute to our planet. And I'll tell you how to do it. You look at the ESTGs one by one. You look at the issue of poverty. What have you done in your lives to change the trajectory of any poor person that you know? What have you done on food waste on the issue of hunger? What have you done on utilization of energy? Do you switch off the lights when you leave a room? Do you reduce the use of plastics, as was pointed out? So if you go down each one of the SDGs, you'll be able to develop your own personal SDGs. So that's one set of things. Each one of us needs to have a personal SDG agenda. And you must be an activist too. And I'm so glad that it's the young people who are powering the activism on climate change. We heard some wonderful words today. But yes, take action yourself. Set the role model. Be your role model. Set your example and campaign and activate your, whatever your sphere of influence is, your parents, your university, your community, your mayor, your president, your country, their interaction in global fora. Put that pressure for change, and that's the only way change will come about. So we need to do two things. Activism alone won't solve it. Personal action alone won't solve it. Twin these two to bring about the change you want to see. And it's so, I'm so gratified to see that young people, instead of our political leadership, is powering this force for action for the future. So that is the overall umbrella and which I wanted to share with you, the fact that the SDGs and climate change are part of the same equation. Two, to establish your own personal agenda for change, a personal SDG agenda, and to agitate for changing things. I'm so glad that Bakashai University will become climate neutral very soon, that university must take action to, to, to be the role model on issues like sustainable development and climate change. But these are the ways in which we move forward. What else can be done? Uh, what else needs to be done? I don't think uh, it's either Paris or the implementation of Paris or Glasgow or the outcomes in COP26 are sufficient or dynamic enough. They are incremental progress, yes. But will incremental progress save us from the climate emergency? I don't think so. But what is it in addition that we need to do to make this dramatic change? And this is what I want to conclude with uh, and open the floor up for your questions. Because I think in answering your questions, your concerns, I'll be able to share my own life experiences particularly in how you become global citizens, how you sort of care for the world, how you care for so many other things which are afflicting our world. Of course, these days, our major obsession is with health. Everyone's wearing a mask, for example, a reminder of the terrible health situation we face and uh, putting the SDGs back on track, reducing inequalities, especially gender inequalities and digital inequalities and how we can all contribute to that. So thank you. 